TTA 201, as I mentioned before, this is the course to go along with the book. Uh, I initially started teaching this course seven years ago and taught it for two years, um, 10 weeks long for two years. And then I stopped teaching it. And the reason I stopped teaching it is because I started doing things that kind of put the course into application in other places. I was developing curriculum and training teachers in this in touching the art method. And I um, was working at an art museum training the tour guides, the docents. So basically I was applying what I'd developed for TTA 201 to other audiences. Now I'm bringing this back now because I have the opportunity to do so, but also I'm bringing it back because I've learned more since then. Um, there's, I want to write at some point um, a second edition of Touching the Art, an expanded second edition for all the things that um, I want to share more that you can apply to getting more out of the visual arts. I'll just give you two quick examples. One, is a concept of empathy. I don't really discuss it explicitly in the book. I talk about the theme of an artwork as the situation a character goes through and what is their reaction to that situation. But this concept of empathy that's implied in that identification of a theme is something that, um, that I found really helpful and really helps to connect enjoying the visual arts with getting to know hu human beings with connecting to other literature. So that's one thing, that concept of empathy. The other thing is, this is seems like a pretty simple kind of thing, but um, I found to answer so many questions to get you to enjoy reading an artwork so much more. And that's simply to, um, to put a question mark after any conclusion you have while you're in the midst of reading to hypothesize more than to draw conclusions immediately the instinct when you make an assertion about a painting about what's going on in a story about what you you see happening is to say ah that's what's going on and then to defend that if you approach reading an agatha christie novel with oh i know who killed who committed the murder and you make that declaration, as you keep reading, you're going to find out you're wrong because there's more to the story. And in the same way, you can have that mystery reading mindset like, OK, let me keep going and try to figure it out. I haven't solved it yet. I'm going to put a question mark, and that encourages me to keep looking and to keep reading. And that's something that I don't really talk about in the book, asking questions, forming hypotheses and supporting them, not necessarily to be a scientist, but to be a more immersive reader. So those are just two examples of the kinds of things that um, are added on to Touching the Art 201 from the last time I taught. Uh, you see some artworks? Uh, Stephanie, you're asking how much time would we set aside each week? So it'd be... Uh, each class is like an hour and 15 minutes. And then um, the there's like 15 minute homework assignments. So just doing a reading of an artwork. So just the practice of doing a reading of an artwork between each class. Um, and then the main thing is the presentation, the final presentation. And I'll mention that in a moment. But let me share some artworks. Um, I'll just do, these are kind of previews. So it's a, they're cropped, but just to give you a sense of some of the artworks we spend time with um, that I don't know that I've, I share anywhere else. So here they are. So there's a lot of drama and we're reading into the stories. And I'm just going to briefly share these with you. And this is just small portions of larger images. And you were know, trying to figure out, you know, well, what's going on in the scene and, and we read the artwork. Um, we try to get to a lot of different kinds of characters and each of these artworks that we spend time with, we, we spend the time with them at different levels. So an initial reading, then an identification of theme, then, um, personally connecting to those artworks.
And unlike a lot of other things um, like that I have to publish in the course, I am not concerned about um, copyright because I'm not um, I'm not publishing this and uh, for the future. It's it's a course. So uh, painters like Norman Rockwell, like more modern artists, I'm including them there as well. So just a little bit of a preview there. Now, Stephanie, to answer a little bit more about the time that voted. So this is a schedule and you can see it's broken down. Reading artwork, identifying a the theme, making connections and empathizing. We spent a lot of time identifying what a great artist is. Um, and all this, all, everything is broken down for the culmination of the course to be your presentation. We um, we spent about, okay, what artists to look for and what, if we're reading art and we're looking for the story and, and the theme of an artwork, what qualifies as a good artist? Uh, we look at portraits, landscapes, and still lifes, and how does that tie into um, finding the theme of an artwork? And then we get into the presentation portion. And the presentation is essentially you are you are picking out an artwork after we have a tutorial session together where we go through some candidate artworks. Um, we discuss some of the what you've learned so far, go through so, your questions, and pick out an artwork and prepare it. So have a discussion for, okay, what's the mean of this artwork? What comparison images will we use? What are the connections? And then you would put together a presentation which would include your reading, maybe a more refined reading, um, the personal connection, the literary connection, the uh, the um, the identification of the theme. So feeling really good, really solid that you went through the whole approach with one artwork that is one that you really care about. So you come away from the course thinking, oh, I did it. Um, I I went through it and I feel certain about what I got from my experience of this artwork. And not only that, I, I shared it with others. And that's part of the kind of certainty you go through with that. Um, there are other side topics, depending on time we might get into, um, like connection of music to art, which is something that is kind of new for me. Um, and I've spent a lot of time in the past few years, didn't have that and touching the art 201. Or how using uh, what we do with the approach we have uh, with TTA 201, how using that for our other genres like literature could be done or in watching movies. But basically the goal of the course is to make you feel like you, you, you own the method. It's yours. Um, Cause a, a lot of people, they say, okay, that's great. Luke I really enjoyed that. Uh, that was, that was fantastic. I went on your tour. I felt like I got spiritual fuel from this artwork, but I, I still feel like I need you to kind of lead the discussion and I don't want to lead the discussion. I want you to lead discussions. I want you to, feel like this this is not just I had the experience, but I can create the experience anytime I want to for myself. Okay. Any questions, thoughts? That was very interesting. Like, and the concept of empathy and mystery, reading, not knowing, yet knowing was very interesting. This. Not being yeah, too I'm, sure. This, this is, this is going to be such an interesting course. Narendra, um, not to, it's it's the course that I wish I had when I was sixteen. Yeah, even even I wish. Hmm. Hmm. Even these things, yeah. Yeah. So if you go to touchingtheart.com, you can find it there. Um, any more questions or thoughts? Oh, it's very intriguing. I'm, I really, I'm, I'm considering it seriously. It, it sounds but like it's so much fun. The open-endedness so. was very interesting because that's what happens. Like you're not, you're not sure yet what to. It's like going through a, a jungle and exploring something. Yeah. 
so something else is um, throughout the course, I'm one of the things that I, I constantly do is I'm very aware of um, okay. of your personal context. Um, so I give personal feedback for your readings um, because everybody has kind of, you're, you're bringing your psychoepistemology, your, uh, your consciousness to an artwork. Some people are more concrete oriented. Some are immediately go are more imaginative. Some are looking immediately for the meaning. So there's a, there are different basic approaches that every individual has. And I'm very aware of that, but there's also a kind of method to get to clarity, to get to certainty. And so you could, you can, you can ask yourself certain questions and practice the things that tie in most to your psychoepistemology. So if you're more like, oh, I see all the details, then my follow-up questions to you will be, okay, what are the implications of those details? Or if you are, if you kind of float in the air and you say, oh, this, uh, this, this, um, this seems like a, a sad tragedy of the fate of life. Then my follow-up question to you is, what do you see in the painting that makes you say that? So a very directed towards your individual psychopistemology as we go through. And the goal is to come away with feeling this certainty with your clarity of understanding of an artwork. Uh, All right. Some doors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, no, Rendra. I think I cut you off. Go ahead. It goes into your own self towards with great enhanced perception. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very, yeah. very, very interesting. Yes. That one -to one thing was very interesting. Yes. Good. Even happened. We thought it was very tragic and all, but we came out with something, something more than what we thought first about that tragic white girl and this. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, I'll throw. Thanks, Narendra. I'll throw this out there. Um, before I go, um, attending the live class is optimal, but if I know there's only one session, like Tuesdays at 9 PM Eastern time, if that doesn't work for you, I'm, uh, I, I'm thinking of offering, like you do the record, you can do the recordings, but then I would still meet with you for the tutorial and you could, you'd still do the homework and, um, offer that up as a possibility. So if that's if the timing doesn't work for you, uh, let me know if you're interested in doing it remotely, but you would, we'd still do the tutorial and the you'd have the graded homework. Stephanie, fabulous. You got it. All right, everyone. Thank you very much Thanks, for joining guys. me. Thank you. thank you. Stephanie, thank you, Brian. And thank you, Joseph. Thank you so much. Luck. Thank you. Stephanie. All right. Bye-bye. Hi, Luke. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you. It's good to have you. Bye. Wonderful. Bye. Bye, Vilak. Bye. Bye.